the teaching of Vedanta was amazing. One aspect where Vedanta teaching differed from a normal uh, offline coaching was the attention teachers gave to our doubts. No matter how many times we asked a doubt, the teachers would patiently clear the doubt every single time. And they made learning a very fantastic experience for us. Yes, I'm here everyone. Good evening. I was just standing near to this particular screen where your comments are coming. Yes. Hi Mohit. Hi Raj. Hi Soumya. Hi Arvind. Hi Murthy. Hi Unknown Gamer. Hi Star Gamer. Gaming Star Gaming. Technology entertaining games. Hi. Con Ronak is ha hi. Manya, Kushagru, Tushar. I am good. Hi Sunil, Shashwa, Tushar. Good evening everyone. Thank you so much for coming here. Now we are just moving more closer to the NTSC part and today we are doing the coordination in plants. Last class we did the coordination in animals. I hope you enjoyed that class also and today we'll be learning about the plant hormones and the movement that occurs in the plants and how they have been controlled. Okay. Yes everyone time to study without wasting your time. It's nine o'clock. We have to be very quick because sleep is really important. So do as study. So everyone just don't focus much on the chats and focus here on the screen the things I'm telling you. Okay. So yes Mohit. <coughs> okay. Let's start everyone. Let's start and you know that you have to add plus one right. You have to add your marks also. So we have active now you know the drill everyone you have to like the video. Definitely you are here, you like the Vedantu channel and definitely you like this video also. So don't forget to hit the like button, share with your friends and definitely subscribe to our channel. After that, do join the telegram group. Most of you are there, but if you're not there, join the telegram group. The link is in the description box below. So you can keep on joining that. Okay. Yes, the doubts are always welcome. See, don't feel bad if I don't, uh, if I'm not able to answer your doubts here in the class. What you can do, you can write in the telegram group. If not, just write on the comment section below. So I'll be able to reply there. Okay. No, you are not late. We have just started and here's the first question everyone. Start counting your marks. Start writing the options. Okay. What are phytohormones are? Phytohormones are A. Hormones regulating the growth of seed to adulthood. Or B, they are the growth regulator synthesized by plants and infusing physiological activities, psychological, sorry, physiological activities, hormones regulating flowering or hormones regulating the secondary growth. And I can see a lot of you are answering the option B and definitely when the majority says things has to be right, right? So phytohormones are nothing everyone, but they are the plant hormones and they control and coordinate the plant growth. Whatever activity is being shown by the plant, ripening of the leaves, ripening of the fruits, seeds, germination, everything in the plant body is controlled by the hormone. So we know that there are five hormones in the plant. There are first, there are three, which are the growth regulators, which actually promotes the growth. They are the auxin, cytokinin and the gibberellin. And there are two which are inhibitor, which will be inhibiting the activities of the plant. For example, ethylene and we have abyssinic acid. They will be the one which will be stopping the certain activities in the plant growth. Maybe the ripening of fruit, maybe the falling of leaves and so and so. So here the phytohormones are nothing but the plant hormones. Plus one. Yes, yes, yes. Sharp shooter, yes, it's alive. Yay, everyone, yes. Now, plus one is there for a lot of you people. Let's add more plus marks to it. Definitely, you have picked the right answer, which is option number B. And 
Let's move to this next question. Next question is here. Okay, Raj, no shoes. All the best. Bye bye. Take care. Okay, so we'll just go it for once again. There's a request. See over here. So phytohormones are nothing but the plant hormones, and there are five different. We have abscisic acid, ethylene, which is the gaseous hormone, gibberellin, and cytokinin, and the auxin. They are divided into two different parts: growth regulators, which are growth promoters, and growth inhibitors. Promoter, they will be pushing the growth. Inhibitors stopping it. So auxin, gibberellin, and cytokinin are the growth promoters, whereas the rest two, ethylene and abscisic acid, are the growth inhibitor. So remember that, and do remember that. Okay. Next question, everyone on your screen. Oh, pe <coughs> people have already started answering this question. The question is, which of the following is a weed killer? Now, in your class eighth, if you remember, you have studied in the crop production. About the weeding, right? Tell me which of it is a weed killer. Very good, everyone. Your name is Aditya. Okay, Pooja, Manya, Ronak. Very good, Ro Rashi Sethi. Everyone is giving the right answer. So what happens, everyone? Oxen. Okay. Two, four D. We have studied in the cl class eighth. Okay. Now this has a mixture of the auxin. Where is it? Okay. So basically, 2,4-D helps actually in the inhibition. See the inf information written over here is important. You can take a print out of it or just read this information, everyone. You know what happened? This is being spread on to the plants, and with the higher concentration, this particular auxin actually act as a herbicide or as a weedicide. So it's it start affecting or killing the weeds. Now that occurs mostly in the dicots because dicots have been designed into that way that this uh, weedy sides will be affecting it more and it will not be affecting to the monocyte monocots. Dicots and monocots we have studied. Dicots have two cotyledons whereas monocot has one. So this particular thing will be affecting more to the monocots. Sorry, more to the dicots and less to the monocots. Clear everyone? So the right answer is 2,4-D. This is a class 8. Very, very important, uh, you know, uh, question. But it's coming in the NTSC. So we have to prepare ourselves from all the angles. Plus 2 everyone. Sharpshooter, this is an Indian accent. This is definitely an Indian accent. Tech, okay, all the best everyone. Plus two, plus two. Great. Chalo. Plus two, I can see a lot of you people are doing the plus two. Amazing. Honey, you are new over here. Very good. Welcome over here. Enjoy the session. Subscribe to our channel and enjoy with us. Next question, everyone. During the adverse environmental condition, you know, sometimes the plants get into the stress. It's not just the humans who actually face the stress. Plants also have the stress factor. So out of which plant hormone over here actually is the stress hormone? Okay, Ronak is saying A, Aditi, Nisha, Junaid. Okay, now it's a chain of A, A, A. Very good everyone. We have just studied. Okay, yes, abscisic acid is the one which is called as the stress hormone also. What happens in the adverse condition if there's no water, okay, if there's no proper amount of food, if there's drought, if there's too much of, uh, you know, weather is bad or the temperature has been sometime cold, sometime bad, this particular hormone, abscisic acid, is being released and that is a stress hormone, everyone, okay. So over here, it basically increases the resistance. It makes a plant more healthier resistance towards the cold and other types of stresses. That's why we usually call them as the stress hormone. Okay. What are the functions and how it does that? See everyone, it closes the stromata. If the stromata has been closed, exchange of water will not be able to occur. Right? Water in the leaves will be conserved in, in one of the step. Second, okay, over here they are talking about the xylem also. Roots also will be affecting. 
so this particular plant hormone helps in tackling the lot of issues in the plant clear plus three everyone done then everyone plus three so remember this that that abyssic acid is also called as the stress hormone and it controls the plant activity if the plant is there in some kind of stress okay Just refresh your page, detailed facts. Just refresh your page. Yes, I'm Indian. I'm proud to be an Indian. Great. Chalo, very good everyone. Tell me how many of you are watching. Tell me everyone, how many of you are there in the class right now? Hi, Aman. Uh, Pratibha, no, we don't have online classes regularly. Regularly in the sense... You will see the teachers' videos are being uploaded every day. Sometimes they are live, sometimes they are premiered. Okay, very good, very good. Amazing. Yes, Gaurav, welcome to our class. Today, every Thursday and Tuesday, we have bio everyone. Thursdays for the NTSC and Tuesday, we do the ninth class syllabus. Okay? So Neil, I'm good. Next question, everyone. And of course, we know the answer. We are there on the question number four now. I think by that, we, you all have plus three, plus three, plus three. Let's make it plus four, everyone. The ripening of fruits can be accelerated by, okay, if we want to make our fruits ripe very early, what plant hormone or what plant hormone that we can add? tell me everyone the ripening of the the ripening of the fruit we are talking about can be accelerated by reducing the supply of water to plant when fruits are maturing increasing the supply of nitrogen to the atmosphere surrounding them or artificially adding ethylene gas to the atmosphere surrounding them or warming up the surrounding you people are a lot of your people are very very smart Everyone is saying, see, yes, because ethylene is a gaseous hormone and it's play major, major role in the ripening of the food. See from here, it's a green. So basically, it's not completely, it's basically very kacha. Slowly, 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 if we add the amount of ethylene gas hormone over here, it will actually become completely ripe, good for us to eat. So ethylene hormone is the one which plays a part into it. So if you want to ripe some fr uh, food, or fruits, basically fruits only, not food. So we will be adding the ethylene gas in the atmosphere. And with that, what happened? That will be taken up by the fruits. And yes, they'll ripe and they're ready to eat. Great. See, my kids over here are super intelligent. I'm so proud of you. Some, uh, summer share I think I'm really sorry uh, we have talked about the plant hormone you can talk we you can go back and watch the video again for that yes Vishal welcome to the class Dikhra Pratibha very good okay honey just just refresh your page okay now yes over here so the function of ethylene will be what one of the function of the ethylene is to help in the ripening of the fruits okay next question everyone plus four i think for a lot of you plus four is there right very good very good everyone amazing and let's see the question number four sorry we have the question number five over here we just did the question number four and a lot of you people have, have answered also Let's see. So, phototropic movement of roots and stems are due to phototropic with the movement of with the help of light and of basically both the things of roots also and for the stems also. Phototropic. Photo means light, and if there's a movement, according to the light, it is happening where in which direction or basically of what? Yes, it's very easy. It will be towards the light. It's nothing but the effect of light, everyone. So the right answer is option B, which is the effect of light. Okay. Great. <coughs> we 
yes gravity will be coming in the geotropism right and of course for the water tropism we have hydrotropism where the water where in the the roots or the shoot will be basically mostly the roots actually looks for the water and they move towards that direction that is called as the hydrotropism yes raju will answer your question what do you think everyone breaking the dormancy the seeds will be able to germinate okay that is a role played by the gibberellin germination okay clear raju that will be the role of the germination plus plus very good plus 5 is there everyone now it it has to be plus 6 now the question number 6 over here is thigmotropism is best exhibited as thigmo it's more about the stimulus which is present around it with that if it's uh, it could be a touch it could be a wind it could be any of the vibration okay we have seen this in the touch me not plant and over here the options are tendrils root apex shoot stem apex and the leaf apex so we know that it is not present at the apex at the tip of the root shoot or the leaf the right answer is watch it's the tendrils it's a small thread like structure over here everyone see over here right these are the tendrils now they basically uh, you know try to move along in a direction where there see some support first of all and of course if they say some kind of changes around it then they moves towards that particular part okay see everyone so here <coughs> they have mentioned clear with that what happens they always look for a place if there is some kind of stretch over there or now if they find a very comfortable place they just move towards that particular part okay yes next so we know the right answer is what right answer is a everyone reflex action uh, we did it in the control and coordination in animals you can go and see that apex means at the tip okay रूट का टिप नीचे एकदम जहां पे रूट ग्रो हो रहा है स्टेम एवरीथिंग यस यस वी आर प्लानिंग टू डू दैट लेट्स सी मोस्ट प्रोबेबली बाय द नेक्स्ट क्लास और मे बी आफ्टर दैट विल हैव दैट सो विल हैव द मेंटी क्विज आल्सो ओके um gora we you we had the video for of uh, the control and coordination in animal in the last week so after this video you can always go back and see that stimulus means any of the external supply for example if uh, if this is a screen if i touch it like this it moves so my uh, touch over here is a stimulus because of it some action occurred okay if there is a if there is a needle if it pinch me what will happen i'll be reacting to it so the needle will become a stimulus okay stimulus the one which actually pushes you to do something or because of that something occur that is the stimulus very good next over here we have question number 7 everyone so now we are moving towards more and let me see how many plus 6 are here you are enjoying the session thank you so much you should enjoy because when you enjoy our brain is very happy our brain is very alert and then only we learn things very good everyone very good so i can see that movement of leaves of the sensitive plants mimosa pudica is due to mimosa is nothing but our touch me not plant and it is have that movement because of what lot of you are saying b and you are absolutely correct basically that's a different name for thigmotropism or thigmonastic right so see before and the after basically this is a response that the touch me not plant shows being coming in contact with any of the physical stimulus or fungus or vibration or anything if the sudden appearance or something this particular uh, plant will actually close its leaves from this to this and that is nothing but the thigmonastic movement plus 7 very good 
वेरी गुड एवरी वन नाउ लेट जस्ट मेक इट प्लस एट नाउ वी कैन मेक इट प्लस एट ऑल्सो हैव वी हैव द क्वेश्चन आई रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द स्क्रीन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मूवमेंट इन प्लांट इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू द चेंज इन द ऑक्सीजन लेवल जस्ट सी रीड दिस क्वेश्चन एवरी वन इट्स अ टफ क्वेश्चन केम इन टू सो Yes Santosh we will be making a video on heredity and evolution very soon okay we are going by that before that we have human reproduction also okay so we have lot of plants yes now i can see lot of your answering which of the following movement in plants is not re related to the change in oxygen level oxygen level will not be affected by this particular thing not affected okay see what what happens usually you must have seen this that during night the the leaves actually droves around they become very sad because sun is not there why this is happening so nicus nastic okay nighty nastic <coughs> is basically the cardiac cycle or the cardiac movement through which we you know what happens you know they it, it responds to the light and when the light is not here the plant usually droves around like this okay the flowers and the petals and the leaves everything will will become are very sleepy they will not be so happy because sun is not there and this particular movement will be seen in these particular plants great plus it is done everyone so right option is a right option is a Yes, Bharga. We'll talk about the timetable. Just let's just finish this. Two more questions are here, and well, after that, I'll just share a very important tip with you. Question number nine is here. Oxygen inhibits the growth of. So we have studied that basically oxygen is a growth promoter, but yes, it stops the growth also, or it inhibits something also. So what out of these it's inhibiting? Let's see. Apical buds, buds which are found on the apical side. or is it parthenocarpy developing what is the parthenocarpy process development of a fruit without the fertilization two gametes are not fertilizing but still the fruit is being prepared that is parthenocarpy lateral axillary buds or the root elongation okay d d d okay let's see yes so the right option over here is that apical buds inhibits the growth of the lateral bud so basically this particular apical bud which is growing at the tip you know will be inhibiting the growth of the axillary uh, buds which are actually arising from in between this particular thing will be inhibiting it clear axillary means bachche which are there over here they are arising from the axis can you see they are arising from here clear so they are just they are not at the tip they are just coming from the between so that is the <coughs> over here so this particular thing lateral axillary buds will be inhibited can you see this will be inhibited this will assure that everything is in my control done very good now plus 9 is there now let's go to see the last question everyone the place where auxins are active is easiest of all this is the easiest 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 everyone the place where auxins are active tip of the root tip of the stem basically movement of roots towards soil is growing embryo or all of the above where you will find the great amount of auxins which are very very in active state also okay let's see yes where they are present they are produced majority of them at the tip of the stem because stem is growing like this right everyone so the amount of auxins present in the tip of the stem will be more so that it can grow clear roots of course it, it will not be able to receive more amount but of course in the stem it will be more clear so yes a is the right answer and it promotes the cell elongation also so what happens everyone over here see so we have this particular hormone right basically if it's going straight 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 it is up there 
This is a very important question in your NCRT, you know, CBSE board exams. That why there is an elongation, why the stem actually turns towards the sun. Basically, you know what happens? The cells over here start becoming elongated. Okay? The hormones start coming in the opposite direction. Basically, it cannot face the sun. It is a very chill pill wala hormone, does not need much of the sun. So, it starts moving on the opposite side. When it moves on the opposite side, the, st the cell of the opposite side start becoming long. With that, you know, growth occurs in this particular way. Clear? So, with one point, we remember a new point also. Clear? <coughs> IA is nothing but a auxins only. Clear? So, it will be found majority at the tip only. Now, we are done with it. But I'll answer a few questions. Don't forget to like, share and uh, subscribe with your friends. Definitely download the app where you'll get all the notes. And join us on the Telegram group. And here it's me. You can write me over here. And now let me talk about the timetable. So I think a few of you asked about the timetable. That how we should do, how we should do, how we can make your timetable. So please divide. I, I keep on telling this to everyone. That make your timetable based on 24 hours. Divide your time with hourly basis. 6 p.m. Okay. Or maybe 6 a.m. Wake up. 7 a.m. What you are doing. 8 p.m. 9 p.m. 10 p.m. Write like this. Make an elaborated timetable. Then you will feel that. Okay. You have, you have so much of hours. And where and where you are spending. Then your eyes will be opened. Then you will be completely in shock. Oh my God. What we were doing. So do that and you will see a great difference. Students, I am telling you, you will see a great difference. Make a good timetable, make an elaborated timetable and that will make a lot of difference. Okay? Of course, I know that your exams are coming and we have to gear up and we have to do a lot of things. So stay tuned to the Vedantu channel everyone. We have been doing a lot but yeah, more efforts will be coming to you because your exams are very close by. Okay, so I will be seeing you next week. Write your marks in the comment section below. Okay. Bye. Bye Samuel. Bye Karun. Bye Omesh. Bye Mohit. Unknown gamer. I really like the smileys. Life Hacker, thank you so much for coming here. Bye bye. Bye everyone. I, I just saw that someone said that I tried it, it failed and no issues. You know, you just try to identify wh what happened because of that it didn't work out. Sit there for a while, sit with your parents, take their help and you'll find a solution. Okay. Bye bye everyone. Thank you so much. I'll be seeing you next week. Lots of love from Vedantu. Hit the like button. Come back again and keep learning with us. Bye bye everyone. Good night. Bye-bye.